So did you ever wonder how planets look so realistic in movies? And how these shots are even made? Well, obviously, they didn't send a camera to space, because that would be neither smart nor cheap. So what they did instead is that they made these planets completely with CGI, with a simple 3D model and ultra high resolution textures. And I'm not talking about 4K or 8K textures, I'm talking about textures that were made specially for this reason with resolution that goes up to 500k, which is insanely large when you compare it to the 4k resolution. And that's what I'm going to show you in this video. So if you follow what I do, by the end of this video, you should end up with this beautiful and realistic earth render. So let's go to the video. So first you need to download the textures. Now for some reason I couldn't find the original post on reddit, where I found this link. However, I'm gonna put this link in the description so we can access it as well. So shout out to this guy who uploaded the textures. Now because these textures are very large, and most people won't be actually able to render them, I actually made a folder with optimized versions, where you can find these textures with resolution from 16k to 40k. Because since I'm recording and also rendering at the same time, it would be really hard for my GPU to handle all of this. So if you want them, it will be the second link under this video. By the way, if you would also like to add stars to your render, you can go to the solarsystemscope.com, you can scroll down, and you can also download these star textures and use them as environment textures. I will put that in the description as well. So let's set up the basic scene first. First of all, let's add a UV sphere. Then go to shading, create a new material, and we will add the color map first. So let's add image texture. Let's open the file manager and find the folder where you have all the textures that you downloaded and select the color map. Now, if you plug the color into the base color, you can see that everything is basically set up. The UV sphere already comes with the UV map, so you can just apply the textures. And before we apply other maps, let's set up the lighting first. So first of all, change the engine to cycles. Let's go to the render preview. Now go to the world properties and change the background color to black. So we are simulating the space environment. Now let's add the sun. So we shift A, go to light and let's select sun. By default the sun is pretty weak, so we need to increase the strength to like 10. Now we can rotate the sun, however make sure that the sun is located at the center of the earth. This will be important later in this tutorial. Now as you can see the earth is kind of chunky, so we need to increase the resolution. So first let's shade smooth the normals, then go to modifiers and let's add a subdivision surface modifier. Now instead of evenly subdivided mesh, we need to tell Blender that the geometry that is closer to camera will basically need more subdivision. And to do this, let's go back to render properties and let's change the feature set to experimental. Then go back to modifiers and let's check this new feature that just appeared called adaptive subdivision. Basically this feature will dynamically adjust the subdivision level based on where our camera is. This will also be important later in this tutorial. Okay, so now we have the lighting and we also have the earth. But as you can see, the lighting is pretty even, everything has the same roughness, the surface is perfectly flat, so we need to fix that. We need to add the other textures. So let's go back to shading. I'm gonna also rename the material. Now let's duplicate this image texture and let's locate the height map, which in this case is the bump map. So let's select this map. Now let's take this color and let's plug it to the height socket of the displacement node and connect the displacement output to the displacement input of the material output. Now as you can see the bump map is doing something, but in reality we are not actually simulating the elevation, because even though it seems like we are displacing the mesh, we are actually not as you can see here. And to fix this, we need to go to the material properties, and under the settings, we need to enable displacement. You can either choose displacement only, I'm going to choose displacement and bump. Now, as you can see we are actually displacing the geometry, but the displacement node is actually displacing the earth too much. So let's change the mid level to zero and let's set the scale to like 0.02. Now let's take care of the roughness. Now because the roughness map was not included, we need to isolate it from the color map. More specifically, we need to isolate the blue color. So first we need to separate the color by using a separate color node. Now we will add the red channel and the green channel together by using math node. And because this is pretty good, we can now take this value, add greater than a node, and let's set the threshold to like 0.01. Now this is not 100% correct, but this is a good way how we can isolate land and the water, because the land has a higher roughness, and the ocean is basically more reflective. Now if I plug this to the roughness, you can see that the ocean is too reflective, so we need to make the ocean a little bit more rough, by using a map range node, where we change the minimal roughness to 0.15. So now, let's make the cloud layer. Duplicate the earth, make it a little bit bigger, 
then create a new material and give it a proper name. Now again, let's add image texture and this time we will open the cloud map. So find the folder and let's open the cloud map. Now instead of the principal BSDF shader, I'm gonna use a subsurface scattering node in combination with transparent node. And we are going to mix them together and we will use the color of the image texture as a factor. And now if I plug the shader into the surface, it looks like the shaders are flipped, so just change the order of the shaders and everything should work just fine. Now change the scale to like 4, change the radius to 1 and by far this is looking pretty good. However, we can take this even further by using the color as a displacement. So let's take the color and let's plug it to the height socket of the displacement node. Let's plug the displacement to displacement and again we need to change the displacements to displacement and pump. Again, the displacement is too strong, so let's change the mid-level to 0, and let's change the scale to 0.01. And if you want even more detail, you can use the same output to make a bump. Just decrease the intensity. And lastly, we need to add the atmosphere. So, let's duplicate the earth, and let's make it a little bit bigger than the clouds. Make a new material, and for the atmosphere material, we will use a volume scatter node. Plug it to the volume, let's change the color to blue and slightly decrease the intensity. And as you can see now this is actually starting to look more realistic because we have the clouds, we have atmosphere, we have the right elevation and we have high resolution maps. However the only thing that we are missing is the night map for the other side of the earth that is not illuminated by the sun. So select the earth and let's go back to the shading tab. Let's duplicate the texture and we will use the last map which is the night map. So select the night map. Now we need to tell Blender that we want this map to be visible only on the part of the earth that is not illuminated by the sun. And here I need to shout out to Blender Guru aka Andrew Price because I wasn't able to figure this out by myself but he actually did in this tutorial. So check out his channel, he's awesome artist. So to basically make this map appear only on the dark side we need to add texture coordinate node. Then we need to select the sun as the object. Then we need to take the object output and plug it into the normal. Now I'm not gonna explain you how all of this works, but essentially if you preview the dot output, you can see that now we have a gradient based on the which direction the sun is oriented, which we will use as a mask for the night map. So let's take the dot output and let's multiply it with the color output of the night map. Now just take this value and let's plug it into the emission strength. However, it seems like the mask is inverted. And to fix this, we will add map range. We will connect it before the multiply node. And we'll just flip these two numbers. So we are gonna set this to 1 and this to 0. And now we can see it's working. We have the night map only on the dark side. However, as I said in the beginning, this wouldn't work if the sun wasn't oriented in the center of the earth. We can see that right now the sun is in the center and it works just fine. But if I move this slightly from the center, you can see that the lights are changing, which is something that you want to avoid. Now this looks cool, but we are missing this blue atmosphere glow effect, which is the essential key to make this more realistic. Now if you are in cycles, I'm going to show you my way how I do this. So first let's duplicate the atmosphere, then go to shading, make a new material, delete the principal PSDF and add a transparent shader. Now I'm doing this because I want to use this sphere in Compositor where I'm gonna blur the edges, which will basically create that good looking glare effect. So let's name this glare. Let's actually put it in the new collection called glare. Now let's take all the other objects and let's move them to a new collection as well. This time the collection will be Earth. Now let's go to the Glare collection and let's uncheck this little checkbox, which will basically disable this collection from the render layer. So uncheck it. Now let's duplicate the render layer, click on new. And in this render layer I'm gonna keep the Glare enabled, but I'm gonna disable the Earth. Then go to view layers and make sure that denoising data is checked. And now let's render the image for the first time. Now when the render is done, I'm going to show you how we can turn this into this with the magic of composing. So go to composing and first of all, let's duplicate the render layers. So here select the first one and here we are going to select the second one, which is the one that we are going to use to make the glowing effect. And the information that we need for this is the denoising tab, which is this black and white mask. So I'm going to take this depth and I'm gonna add greater than 
I'm gonna use the default threshold and then I'm gonna add a blur. Make sure it's visible and change the type to fast. Now let's set the X and Y values to like 100. And now because the color is blue, we need to add a color ramp. So let's add the color ramp and we need to change this white to the blue. You can also use the color picker to make sure that the color is the same. And now we need to combine this earth with this glare and we can do this with alpha over node. So let's take the color output and let's add alpha over node. Plug it to the first socket and before you actually plug the earth render we need to remove the noise. So let's take the noise image and let's add a denoise. Then plug the normal into normal and then plug the albedo to the albedo. And now let's plug the image into the second socket. And if I now preview the alpha over node, you can see that nothing basically changed. And it's because we need to use this blurred mask as a factor. So let's plug the image into the factor. And now we can see that something is happening, we have this glare. But we need to actually blend it with the earth a little bit better. Because there is this harsh line that is pretty annoying. And again we can do this with color ramp. So plug the color ramp and let's tweak the black values and bring it a little closer. This should solve the problem. Now this is basically it, but I want to make the render a little bit more cinematic. So I'm gonna add a few more nodes. First let's add RGB curves, change it to film like and let's bring the curves a little bit closer and let's make a S curve. I really like using it because if you see the comparison with this, it just looks more cinematic and it's more visually pleasing. Now let's increase the contrast, so I'm gonna add a contrast node. So the contrast to 1. Then I'm gonna add a glare node. Plug it after the contrast node. And I'm gonna change the type to focus glow. I'm gonna bring down the threshold to like 0.3. And I'm gonna change the size to 9. I'm gonna use the glare one more time, so I'm gonna duplicate it. But this time I'm gonna use ghosts. I'm gonna use for iterations, high quality, color modulation to 0.4, and the threshold to 0.6. Now I would like to add some chromatic aberration to the corners, so let's add lens distortion. Let's set the distortion to minus 0.01 and the dispersion to 0.1 as well. And lastly, I'm gonna add some color correction because I want the render to be a little bit more bluish. So let's add a color balance, change the correction to offset power slope, and let's tweak the colors a little bit. And this should be the result. So as you can see, even though this render is good, you can always make it better with some composite magic. That's all from me, I hope you liked the video. Check out my shade guard library, which is a collection of fully procedural materials for Blender that are fully customizable and dynamic. You can find them in the descriptions. If you learned something from me, subscribe. And I'm gonna see you in the next video. See ya.